Hello there, YouTube. Um, as I said a while ago, I did an interview with um, Brown Cigar Store in Green, New York. Uh, this is the interview. I'm sorry if the if it's not exactly the highest grade professionalism inter interview you've ever heard. Um, there are a few flaws in it. There's customers coming in and out of the store, and there's me babbling on a little bit. Um, but this is the review in its entirety. I don't have any video to go along with it, so I just put in some pretty pictures that I took at some point. And I hope you guys find it interesting. Alright, enjoy. Alright, this is Philip Brzezinski, date March 4th, 2015. And this is going to be my business person interview for basic business at Corning and today I'm interviewing could you please tell us who you are and what is it that you do Jerry Smith one of the owners of Brown Cigar Store in Corning New York all right um, before we get into the uh, personal questions could you give me a could you give me a little bit of history about the, the store itself we started in 1889 so this year we'll be 126 years old. We sell tobacco, cigars, cigarettes, and related products. All right. Um, I'll give you a brief description of the store itself. Um, on the front, it the facade hasn't really changed much. It looks like since the 50s or so. 50s, yeah. The 50s. Uh, black tiling with a red sign just above it. Uh, the inside is pretty much exactly what you would think a cigar store would look like if you picture one in your head. It's not not terribly wide because we're on a, a street of row buildings, but it has glass cases on either side and the cigars are on the counter directly to your right and in the back left and the pipes are directly by the door to the left all right could you tell me a little bit about what your early education and life was like born and raised in Corning New York Catholic school for eight years High school, public school for four years, attended Corning Community College. All right. All right, so that brings me to the, if you went to college, what was your experience with it? Good question. Um, it was kind of a choppy experience because I was also working here at the same time and that's when my dad first got sick so I kind of left college to work here at the store with him. All right, could you tell me a little bit about, a little bit about your dad and how long, how long did he work here? He started here when he was 15, worked uh, all through high school and um, when he joined the army, when he came back he um, became a partner and shortly after he became a partner Mr. Brown passed away and his dad was the sole owner. All right. Um, so let's see what do we got here. Um, do you think college today is absolutely or at least partially necessary to someone who wants to get into a business career? Uh, I would say definitely uh, a big help. Um, you know, the accounting of it, the learning about economics, um, I think it'd be best if the professors own a business or had owned a business as well, so that they can, you know, speak from experience. For, well, fortunately, in my class, my professor is Mr. Bonomo, the one who bought all the theaters and ran them for a while, so that certainly helps. Um, 
So the so you said you you got you became one of the owners when your dad got sick. When he passed, when I he became passed. one of the owners. All right. So how is how is the ownership of this place split up? With just me and my sister, both fifty fifty. All right. Um. Did, did um did you become interested in this earlier in your life, or did you only really become interested when it became necessary? We all. I have uh, six siblings, and most of us have worked here since we were uh, in probably fourth grade. Really, fourth grade that early. All right. All right. So you. So this has been a family thing for your whole life. Oh yeah. Uh, when did you When did you first get into smoking tobacco yourself? And your preference? What is it? I do feel inclined at this point to point out that I am conducting this interview while he's actually working, so occasionally he will have to go help a customer. Um, In case you're wondering I, what the silence is. I am enjoying, I enjoy cigars. I've tried a pipe and I don't have the patience. I've never been a cigarette smoker. Um, I probably started smoking cigars. Uh, Probably in the early 90s is is a regular. And what kind of what kind of cigars do you like? Or in... Dominican are my favorite. I like a pretty mild cigar. Pretty mild. All right. All right. Um. How did you? Well, I did. Well, how how long do you see yourself continuing on this? career <laughs> I, I you know that's a tough question I don't have an answer for that one I guess till I can't do it anymore all right so so for some time then yet if possible all right um kind of a theoretical question now is if you were to have to get into involved in pretty much any any other business what would you have what would you choose knowing what you don't know well I, I I don't know definitely don't have an answer for that one all right um right, let's see what else we got um what are what are some careers you see as being promising for m people my generation or the younger generation Sorry, Tom. definitely right. something involved with uh, Heavily into computers. Mr. Gale? Yes, sir. Good meal. All right, what are you up to? Just got through delivering meals, so we got to have some. So you got your own? Got to. Uh, two tray pies. And a lot of them. All right. Now, if I wanted to get involved into this into this industry or this type of business, what would what would you recommend? Or you move from New York State. Move from New York State. All right. Why would why would that be? Because the taxes are high. The restrictions are high. The you have to deal with too many agencies. Government is in your business all the time. All right, government in my business. So get out of New York State. 
All right. Um. Now let's. What was I? I just had something in my head. Hi there. I don't remember what I was gonna say. Um, why do you, why do you suppose it is so different from state to state? Because we have a very big nanny state. Everybody you know, from the governor on down to the town council here want to control and want to be in your business. Um, now, what are what are some of the, the biggest changes you think you've seen to the tobacco industry since you've been in it? Biggest changes. Um, back in the mid-90s, the cigar boom um, just took off. Um, early 2000, the super high tax increases. Um, the internet, uh, people buying a lot over the internet. Um, those are probably the three big ones. Um, that that does bring something to mind. Um, from from my knowledge, your internet presence is not particularly a big one. So how how do you manage to keep this place going? With we have Facebook. These new. Uh, we have a web page, you know, web page. We do emails, so we participate a little bit on the internet. Probably not as fully as we should, but it is what it is. Okay. We're old school, but it it seems to be working pretty well. You're, uh, is your is the business actually doing okay, or is it floundering? I think right now, this time of year, every business on Market Street is floundering. Cold weather means no customers. Correct. All right. Now we're going to get into a little bit of public health and safety. Like, how? What do? You, what is your opinion on how people are informed about tobacco and various forms of tobacco? I think the do-gooders exaggerate. On the verge of lying to the public. Hi there. Hi. Do you remember us? Mm. The e-cigarette people. Okay. Of, yeah. It broke on me already. Okay. It, like burnout or something. Battery didn't. Okay. After just a little bit. And it was having a problem in the beginning, and I'm thinking maybe it just because it's brand new. Now it doesn't work at all. You got the paperwork and stuff that came with it? All the packaging? Well, I thought I was going to be my forever friend. Yeah, but doesn't the paperwork have your warranty and stuff with it? Warranty? And something I, like I would assume it had all that I paperwork. Think, no, it, it didn't. Warranty, no. I buy those for my son from here. Yeah. He hasn't had any And trouble. what was the brand of that one? Um, Zigzag. Okay, I am out of Zigzag right now. Um, oh my God, I'm going to die. Actually, I don't have any anything like that right now. I'm all out of everything. Um, there isn't a single e-cigarette of any kind here that she can not, use until not, the one comes in. Not a flavorful one. You know, not a not, one of not a refillable of like that. Mm -hmm. I don't have. Not even a battery. I don't have any. If it if it burned out like that, it's something wrong with it. Yeah, it's not just a battery. He hasn't anywhere else around here again. Can you um, can you give her a call when yeah. they come in so we can exchange it? Can we also, Put down a. Uh, 
Name and a phone number. Oh my God. Give me your, oh, I got your cell. I'm going to, in case. Yeah, I will. And, uh, that's a zigzag. Yep, zigzag. Uh, I'm going to call it a kit. Okay. All right. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you All right. very much. Do you know when it might be in? Uh, yeah. I've got to call the salesman and see when she's coming around. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, that little episode brings me on to e-cigarettes. Okay. Opinions? Thoughts? Uh, you know, they do well in the winter. We're kind of new at it. We'll see how it does in the summer. You know, it's a good reason that you don't have to go outside because it doesn't have any any smoke or anything. It's just vapor. So, all right. Um, what else, what else do we have in here? Um, all right, we've talked about e-cigarettes. Now, pipes. Because uh, that's that's what I'm particularly interested in. I like cigars, but I don't like them as much as I like pipes. Um, what is what is your main customer base for pipes, and has has that changed any since you've been working here? Um, typically, the pipe smoker is an older gentleman. Um, we have noticed recently, you know, college age guys trying it anyway I won't say they're they're into it but they're trying it um, but mostly older mostly older guys all right um, and cigars what is the cigar um, customer base Boy, cigars are all over the place um, you know the younger guys and gals both like the domestic stuff you know the flavored the pre-packed where somebody that's a little bit more established established definitely likes the uh, handmade cigars, you know, Dominican, Honduran, like that. My, my personal preference is either for uh, Punch Rare Corojo or one of the Romeo Julieta Reserves. Um, what do you, how do you see the tobacco industry surviving in the 21st century? Or how do you, what do you think some of the changes are going to be? All depends on what the do-gooders in the government does. If they would back off, things would be fine. You know, if you, if you look at just New York State to Pennsylvania on cigarettes, you're talking $3 a pack difference. And how many people drive over the border to go to Pennsylvania? New York State is losing millions of dollars in tax revenue. But they it's, don't seem to care. Seems, so. to be, seems to be one of those counterintuitive things if... You want to make more money, charge less. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Once I stopped recording, I continued asking a few more questions, and the some interesting stuff was that I that I would I wouldn't have remembered honestly if I got home. Um, I asked him about. This the store being in business as long as when did you say it was? 1889. 1889. So we were 125 years old last year, and in celebrating that anniversary, the Cigar Institute of America called us and said, congratulated us, and said we were the third oldest in the country. The oldest being 145 years, us being 125 years, and the middle third, second oldest 127. All right. That's um, that, that's that's something I I would have thought I would have heard before, but and these display cases are all original, so they're all 125 years old as well. So so the display case I have my laptop sitting on right now is well over 100 years old. Yes. Now, the glass is the glass. This isn't. This has been broken twice. That case is original oh. glass. That's why that one's all scuffed up scuffed and marked, up. and yep. this one is... From years of coins going across it. All right. But these two cases, the pipe case and the case behind me, are all a set. Um, 
And another thing I that uh, I found out is that the building that I'm in right now is not is not the original store. The original store was directly next door. Right next door. This and is our second you, you location. Know, run me through the, the the tale of woe and intrigue again. Well, they, they built. We we didn't we rented. We didn't own. The building owner wanted to sell the building. They didn't accept our purchase offer. Um, it was a double building, so the tenant on the east side of the building moved out. The tenants upstairs moved out, and to you know to find locations. And after they didn't accept our our uh, purchase offer, we moved out, and the building sat empty for approximately a year. And they ended up accepting a purchase offer that was about ten thousand dollars less than what we offered. Now, they thought they were going to get rich. Well, uh, that doesn't always happen when some people think it will. Right. Um, and one of the other, and just behind me, where across from where I have my computer and I'm recording this, there's a history board. History board, or three of them. And there's stuff like, all right, let's see, Steamship Company, something about that. Right. Now, uh, which Steamship Company is that? Is, it, is that the White Star? Or is the one, what, the one in the middle then is the white star up above that. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that says white star. That's the same company that sold tickets to the Titanic. We were we sold steamship railway railroad railroad <laughs> railway tickets steamship tickets back in the day. Is that got a date on it? Um. Let's see. Either one of those. October 23rd, 1911. Okay, so that's when we were selling passage tickets. I'll give you an idea of some of the prices here. Um, second class rates from New York to Gibraltar, $65. Beirut, $110. So those are, those are not cheap tickets. Not back then they weren't. Right, the brown, the brown cigar store sign up above your head, the picture. All right. Up in the top middle. Oh, there. Okay, so that's the same Indian that's in our front window. Mm -hmm. Right here, right there. That was from the 1950s. Corning Incorporated Tubing Division made that. And uh, there's a little letter to the left of that. Mm -hmm. To. Uh, to or from Bob Lambert. Isn't that what the name on that one, Bob? That's what it says. Yeah, so he was head of tubing. And uh, the goal with him and my dad was trying to find, hi there, hi there. trying to find a um, company that, a use for the tubing, other than thermometer tubes and test tubes. And the end signs was it. Is that 528. Five, Yeah, Macanudo, is that what that is? Huh? Macanudos? Macanudos, I think they're, they're over here in this case. Wanna go back to that? Uh, yeah. That's our Um, and while I'm still recording, there's a few, there's, there's, being in here, there's a lot of just interesting stuff to look at. One of the reasons I like coming in here is this gives me somewhere indoors to smoke during the winter, and there's 
there's tins all over the place on top of cabinets and there's a a very old looking uh, hookah and what's the deal with that? That belongs to one of our customers. You know, Alan, the guy with the beard that comes in? Yeah, I know. That's his. He worked in Saudi Arabia in the 80s. Really? And uh, he thought he'd make a cool display piece. If somebody wanted to buy it, he'd be willing to sell it. If I can help you find anything, sir, holler out. I'm looking for probably a four cigar carrying case. A small Tupperware container, if it's long enough, that'll work. So I, I use one of the yeah, snap locks. It's, it's going. It's going in. Yeah, I've foregone. I'm using the two bag method with the sponge instead of mm-hmm. you bottom with the door anymore. Um, I normally have a little four, a whole four cigars travel through the door, and I'm out of them. Okay. And I know I won't have them till the weather really breaks. Um, I would take uh, a double cutter. I'm out of cutters right now. Got those ordered. The last two orders I put in have been back orders. Okay. So I ordered from another company yesterday. Are these the standard Zippos or are these the Zippo torches? This is the Zippos here. Okay. The blue flames are these two. And then everything pretty much else in here is a, is a standard. Did you say these two are blue flames? Yeah. Until the water breaks on, uh, on the travel humidors. Yeah. 
I'll be back to see you then. All right. Thank, thank you much. You. I appreciate it. All right, I was just one more, one or two more things. Um, one, uh, you were telling me about the I earlier. I I pointed out the pipes are directly by the door. Right now, when I when we were talking earlier, you described for me when it was when you're still next door. It was a slightly larger location, but I don't think that has too much effect on what it was. But in this picture here, there's. How many, how many pipes did you say you had at one time? I know, with those two wall units and that glass case, over 300. Over 300. Like, even like the big places now don't have that many. Yeah. Astounding. Yeah. I yeah. never put 100 feet. When we moved here in 89, we cut out the one that was in behind the glass doors. I need some numbers also. Okay. Uh, 50 cent straight three number, 525, five. and 50 cent box the same number. Uh, 50 cent straight four number, 4260, and the same box. Take five, Now a lot of these uh, these last few questions are just going to be my own personal edification. Um, first of all, those I'm going to get those. They live a Oliva Series G and Romeo Julieta Reserve. So I have been wanting to try the Oliva for a while. Is that the five twenty eight one? Yeah. And then. Like just, I think this is my last question. And honest to goodness, it is. Um, what is your favorite part about this store? Just something that like, like amuses you or entertains you every time you think about it. because my brother and sister have worked here for a long time too. <clears throat> they remember the characters that used to... I mean, there's characters today, but they're not like the characters of old. You know, the old, when, when my dad was here. And, uh, but this was a different, it was a different time. The people were different, you know, uh, when I see you're too young. You wouldn't remember probably Amo Houghton. No. I he don't. was he was the CEO, one of the CEOs back in the day. He was our congressman for a while. <clears throat> and he was somebody who would just come in and chew the fat and you know, just they were it was the CEOs, the the, the, the congressmen, they were normal people. You know, and it was they were you know, they tell you stories. They, it just it was it was just a different world from today. All right, brown cigar store. Uh, she's out to lunch. Can I take a message? Oh, okay. Sure. Two four zero four. We'll have her do you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Um, I'm I'm out of questions now. I got nothing else. Okay. Um, 
I, I guess that does it for today. I'm I'm headed out. I've got things to do, place to go. Alrighty. Um, won't be the last time in. So. Good luck. So thank you very much for all that.